Listen now to the word of God from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. When the day of the Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. This is the word of God for all the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning, church. A couple of housekeeping items first. For those of you worshiping online, later in communion, you will need either a light or some form of fire as we're gonna play with fire after communion. <laughs> Second point, my sincerest apologies to uh, Miss Emily. Uh, when she made the announcement, indeed, my first entry into ministry was as your uh, congregational minister of care for about four and a half years. I then became the moderator or the president of the board, the pastoral moderator for the Heart of Texas Association for the United South Central Conference of the United Church of Christ. Business cards are a problem. Uh, that only in April, on April 22nd of this year, I relinquished that four-year position. We rotate two years as vice moderator, two years as moderator, and that happened April 22nd right here in this church when I handed the torch off to someone else and exhaled as hard as I have ever done. <laughs> I'm grateful for the chance to come before you today in sermon, especially to your worship chair, Clark Thompson, your church administrator, Kelly DeClean, and of course, Pastor Megan Deaver. Uh, so if things don't go well, <laughs> it's their fault. <laughs> May we go into prayer, please. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. May we all, all be open to the voice of the Holy Spirit to guide our thoughts and hearts today. Amen. Just what is the Holy Spirit? Don't fear. We all, though, could celebrate three months of sermons to this topic, and you might still leave here asking each other, so what is it? The Holy Spirit is God's present activity in our midst. The Holy Spirit is God's presence in our midst. When we sense God's healing, God's challenge, or God's support and comfort, we say that it's the Holy Spirit at work. Now, depending on which theologian you read, the Holy Spirit may or may not be the Father, may or may not be the Son, or may or may not be both. From the theologian Vladimir Losky, God is at the center of a triangular form with the Father, the Son, Father, Mother, the Son, and the Holy Spirit at each of the points on the triangle. There are connecting lines from God at the center of these, and this reinforces his teaching that God is the Father or Mother. The Father and Mother is not necessarily the Holy Spirit. God is the Son, and God is the Holy Spirit. He adds that, for example, while you are connected, the Son is not the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is not the Father. So is anybody more confused? <laughs> they are the same, but they are not. In Hebrews, the spirit for wind and spirit and breath are nearly the same. The same is true in the Greek. In trying to describe God's activity among them, the ancients were saying that it is like God's breath. 
It's like a sacred wind. It could not be held or seen. From John 38, the wind blows where it chooses and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. For you Harry Potter fans, as one of the children eluded earlier, it is like trying to catch smoke with your bare hands. But the effect of God's spirit, like the wind, could be felt and known. We sense the spirit in many different places and in many different times. Alone in our quiet time, our prayer, or in the busy times while we're in the community of believers. Reverend John Dorhauer, the president of the United Church of Christ, when it is important for us as the church to discern the movement of the Holy Spirit in our time, to invite her to speak to us about which of the moral issues our day requires that special attention and reveal to us what purposes we should be stewarding our time, our talents, our resources. It makes perfect sense to do that in community that is open to the full array of God's shaping hand. In today's reading, one realizes that this pouring out of the Holy Spirit is the true launch of the church's mission. But we will not be singing happy birthday to the church today, as many churches do. The Apostle Paul writes that the Holy Spirit comes to us to help us in our time of weakness, to guide and support us in our mission of faith. The early church was very fluid in its way of operating and spreading the word because of the Holy Spirit. What to preach, where to go, who should or could preach, who could speak in worship, who should lead the community and how to treat others, all with the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Then Paul, decides there needs to be some order about how the church worked. And things have never been the same since. And as with any organizational changes, we sometimes lose the ability to have the Holy Spirit guide us. Suddenly the church now has structure for everything. Who can preach? Who can teach? Who can be in leadership and who gets to make the decisions and who cannot? If we read a bit further in Acts, in verse 17, where it reads, In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. This means all, all of God's children. And we don't get to choose who those are. Probably one of the most important words in the scripture is all, totally inclusive. The Holy Spirit did not and does not create exclusions. You get to do it and you don't. I remember hearing a sermon from a pastor one morning after the death of Reverend Fred Phelps. Now, for those of you who don't remember Reverend Fred Phelps, he was the pastor of Hillsboro Baptist Church. He had been a pastor since the age of 16. The church was very well known for picketing military funerals, gay events, gay funerals, and events that did not fall in line with their belief of how we should live. Much of their income was from lawsuits they filed against people where it was perceived their religious rights had been violated. The minister that morning started the service with, I am as sure as I'm standing here with you today that Reverend Fred Phelps is in the company of the risen Christ. That happened right here in this very sanctuary. 
and there were lots of moans and groans and gasping. And then the minister reminded the congregation that when it comes to matters of the Holy Spirit and the risen Christ, you don't get to decide who gets that grace. It is not our job. Just as importantly as emphasize, emphasizing the word all, what if we take the phrase in the last days? Now, I know many ministers treat that as when the world comes to an end and everybody either dies and goes to hell, don't believe in it, every, everybody dies or they are lifted up. What if we interpret that not as the end of time or the end of our physical life here on earth, and the coming of God, of course, but the ending of our previous tired, worn out habits, shedding off previous lives and taking on a new life, a new direction, a new love. The new direction as guided by the Holy Spirit, a complete new beginning here among us. We must see things differently, differently than we have in the past. We can't continue to hold on to that's the way it's always been or that's the way we've always done it. Technology is a very good example. What we used to think of as very high tech and wondrous 20 years ago, today would seem a little old fashioned and a little silly. Everyone can see the darkness and despair in their own lives and in the world around them. And the last several years have made us see even more darkness. We see growing division between the rich and the poor, how health care is provided, the rights of those whom we deem different than ourselves, and the intolerance of those who have differing opinions and lives from our own. And we sit and we wait for the blowing wind of the Holy Spirit to come and change everything. And it will. But we first have to open the door to let it in. Probably everyone sitting here and online knows the fear of our changing lives, growing from youth into adulthood, becoming parents, and I cannot imagine that fear, planning for the future of ourselves and our loved ones, any life changes, even those we hoped for, can bring fear. The Holy Spirit is meant to be our light, our guide to grace and comfort. But we must open our hearts and minds to that guidance. One question we need to ask is not how will I respond to the guiding light, but how will we respond? How will we utilize our gifts and show love and support for those who have heard the Holy Spirit and have begun their new journey into the light? I'm going to leave you with a paraphrase from Reverend Dr. Catherine Matthews Huey of the United Church of Christ in her writings about the Pentecost in her book, Sermon Seeds. On Pentecost, may you find your heart singing with the Spirit of God, your ears humming with the voice of the Spirit, speaking in a language that reaches deep, deep into your soul, and the wisdom dawning on your mind so that the shackles that have hardened around your mind and heart may be broken and God's voice and light set free. May your communities and churches experience the coming of God's spirit 
and light, anticipate it with joy and hope, and give into it with love so that when the day is done, all, all of the world may know the light and the love of God because of you. Amen.